welcome to today's Digital Scholar webinar. My name is Katja Reuter. I am an assistant professor at the University of Southern California and the director of Digital Innovation and Communication at the Southern California Clinical and Translational Science Institute. For those of you who attend our webinars more regularly, you're probably aware that we are highlighting digital approaches that can improve different aspects of the traditional research process. And today, we will explore the use of electronic laboratory notebooks in research and touch upon two additional topics, project and team management. We will hear from a group leader about his experience with such a digital tool and how it can make research teams more efficient. Digital technologies are shaping the way research is conducted, results are captured and findings are disseminated. So we wanted to explore the benefits of using an electronic lab notebook what it requires and how one should go about implementing it. So we hope that after today's webinar, you will be able to describe the potential and strengths of using such a tool, identify different types of electronic lab notebooks, describe their basic features, how they're used, and also address potential weaknesses. So it is a great pleasure for me to introduce Dr. Ulrich Dirnagel. He is director of the Department of Experimental Neurology at the Charité Universitätsmedizin in Berlin, Germany, and founding director of Quest, a center for transforming biomedical research. As always, we will have time for your questions at the end of the presentation, so please add your questions to the Q&A panel, which you can find on the right side of the webinar. Ulrich, so thank you very much for joining us today. Please take the stage. Okay, so thank you for the opportunity to talk about uh, ELNs. And um, um, if you can give me the second slide, the one with the uh, disclaimer, um, uh, that's, that's important. Um, one disclaimer is that I strongly believe that paper laboratory notebooks are really no longer state of the art. But what's uh, more important, I have to start before I get into different uh, uh, products and so forth, and specifically specifically into one product that there are many others out there, and that they um, most of them, the, the ones I know, do a good job. And uh, I have uh, given you a link for a list of, of other products, and um, I'm obviously also sharing this this uh, presentation, and then you can uh, use the link to find out about uh, other products and lab folder, and that's my third disclaimer. Um, what I will tell you and what I will show you is from uh, a company called Labfolder, and it's a startup that's uh, from the Berlin area, and um, I have no uh, royalties from them, no benefits, whatever. We, we just have a uh, lot of experience with, with this product and, and uh, actually are very happy with it, but that's not to say that there's nothing else out there. So, um, next slide, please. Um, this is just a short reminder, I think, we get into the ELN, this is about reproducibility crisis. I guess that's something that um, many of you have heard of or maybe even have exposed to. I think we have some uh, big ongoing discussion and that's uh, the next slide then uh, where I have flipped some, um, some of the recent articles um, that deal with quality problems, that deal with um, even some some uh, uh, fraudulent work and so forth. So uh, just to say in general, I think these are times where there is a lot of discussion about what we do in, in biomedical research, in particular in our um, um, laboratories. And um, there is, a, I think, a, a growing concern that, that we may uh, improve um, our quality here. And, um, so the next slide brings us actually already to uh, the subject, and uh, this is a um, 19th century uh, laboratory notebook uh, with, where we sort of photocopied a page of, uh, of a famous uh, physiologist, and uh, on the right side this is a uh, clip from a lab book from, from our laboratory, and um, I think it's obvious that not much has changed, and that is actually quite surprising uh, because uh, all our data is digital um, and then we, we, we print it out, we clip it into those um, lab books. Uh, there is no real tracking of what's going on and, and so forth. So it's kind of uh, an atavism, um, I would say. So um, next slide um, is just a reminder um, if, if you're interested 
in reading about uh, what we are discussing uh, today, uh, we have written an article on electronic laboratory notebooks, called it a pocket guide. Um, there is a link also provided um, if you're interested to um, read a little bit more, you'll find it there, but many of the things um, I will touch upon in the next minute. minute. Um, the next slide um, also is actually, you, you will not be able to, to, to decipher it, but it's kind of a reminder for me. Um, we um, not only established uh, and worked with a laboratory notebook, um, we have actually, if you wish, studied it in the sense that we have been um, running uh, surveys with our people in the laboratory. This is about the laboratory that I'm uh, responsible for that I'm running for. Uh, it, it's about eight to 100 uh, people, and there are PhDs, and there are medical researchers, and there are technicians, and so forth. And we have been trying to find out what their feeling is about documentation of their work before we got into the use of an electronic laboratory notebook. And we were following in, following up um, how they felt uh, about their experience and what they liked and what they didn't like. So actually, we have quite an insight into um, whether people are, are happy with it and what the benefits are they like and, and so forth. So um, the the results of this of this survey, uh, I think, is also covered in, in the article that I was recommending um, on the previous slide. Now, next slide please, is, is kind of a spider web, and that's just um, before we get into the specifics, um, uh, I want to use this to, to make the point that I think an electronic laboratory notebook, and, and we're already talking about something that is way beyond what a paper um, notebook could do, is really in the sense that it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a pivot to, to many of the things that we are um, uh, we need to be concerned when, when we are running laboratories or when we work in laboratories. And this concerns quality management, collaboration, data sharing and data storage, inventory management, reporting, dissemination, auditing, and so forth. And it, it, I, I, I'm, I'm really convinced that an electronic laboratory notebook is, is, is the pivot of all this and can be actually used to, to systematize all those things. Now, the next slide shows you um, uh, or, or tries to make a point, um, and, and I call it horses for courses, um, there are obviously different ways of keeping track of what's going on in the laboratory. And um, you can you can use a paper laboratory notebook, uh, and it's time honored, honored and has been done for, for hundreds of years. But if you try to list, and that's done on the left, uh, in the left column, what can be done with it, Obviously, uh, a, a paper laboratory notebook can uh, manually uh, manage users because you have your own and someone else has another one. Um, but um, all the other features that are listed here, and I'm going to show you uh, some of them in action, um, are obviously not covered from, from digital documentation, text searches, um, uh, exchange of data, management of workflows, analysis of data and so forth but of course there is a price to it in the in the in the true meaning uh, of the word so a paper laboratory notebook it has a low price there's no discussion about that and and if you go into into the different uh, digital domains that you could use to, to uh, record uh, your work in the laboratory um, uh, there, there are there are also different flavors and they come at a different price and so the next step beyond uh, paper into the digital world would be an electronic documentation system as you have it in Word, in Evernote, in OneNote and so forth and in fact some people are using um, such systems. Um, they obviously have some of the features that we are interested in. Uh, there is a text documentation, you can search them, um, you can exchange uh, data and so forth. But there are things uh, and, and actually uh, very important things that are obviously miss missing and that's uh, user management, that's uh, a co compliance with um, uh, certain regulatory um, uh, uh, the, the certain regulations um, and many other things that you can't do with it. And uh, if you want to do this, and I think one needs to do this because uh, you can you 
can in a in a in a word file or in an Evernote file you can delete data and no one will ever be able to see what you have done whether you have deleted it and so forth so so there are serious issues and it's certainly not good scientific practice to use such a system uh, in its raw form you would have to print out um, you would have to to uh, sign them and then I don't know bind them and and then it gets really complicated. This brings us to the true ELN um, and as I already mentioned, there are many uh, companies that that offer them and they can do many things. Uh, some can do more, some can do less. And on the sort of on the right end of the spectrum, there are so-called laboratory inventory management systems, high-end ELNs, very often used in in industry. Um, and they, they 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 have a plethora of, of things that you can do with them. Sometimes even there's a problem with it because they get too complex, um, and usually they have a very high price. So um, I will not focus on some uh, uh, pro on a product that is in this middle category, uh, classical ELN. Next slide, and that's uh, I already mentioned the product is called Lab Holder. Um, it does the things that you would expect from an electronic laboratory notebook. You can, that's on the right side. You can put in data. You can um, open documents that uh, come from various sources. Um, you can visualize and annotate images that you um, bring in via the, the instruments that you use. Um, you can uh, customize entries. You can access the data from everywhere. You can export your data. Um, and, and you can create a workflow. So that's, but that's very dry. So um, I will show you some uh, some examples of this. Um, before I do this, um, uh, just uh, as a reminder, also um, you can and and for this presentation, um, if if you share it um, after after my presentation, you could use these links. Um, Lab folder has video tours, which are more sort of. Uh, online and more in depth to what I'm showing you now because I can only show you screenshots. Um, so if you're interested, um, uh, I, I recommend to check out their, their YouTube channel and just um, check out some of those videos. Um, next slide, please. Um, now, uh, let me just go through a few of the features. I'm, I'm not sure some of you will have used such a system, some of you won't. And so um, for those of you who won't, that give you a, um, a, a very um, rough idea on on how this looks like so um, and I'm, I'm sure and the ones that I know work very similarly so in, in an electronic laboratory notebook you have usually projects uh, that's sort of the, the unit um, and in this project uh, and, and that's how you start you define a project and then you you define entries and, and they are just numbered. Obviously, you can also name them. And this is, in a way, how you would write a laboratory notebook. But obviously, the difference is that you get everything in one place. Um, and that's just one screenshot where someone has put a template um, for uh, for a PCR. I'm, I'm, uh, I will show you templates in a second. And then some results uh, as a um, as as uh, data that was brought in from the machine. Um, and uh, these are things that you would normally print out and then clip to your um, um, uh, to your paper notebook. But in this case, it, the data is is really inside. These are not JPEGs. These are TIFFs. Um, so they are are not um, um, uh, altered in any way. Next slide. Um, it's just another example. Uh, here you can see some microscopy data on top, and and then um, someone has written about what was done, what the cells were, and and uh, what conditions were studied, and so forth. Uh, really, nothing um, exciting in the sense, or that it's very different from what you would do in a in a normal um, uh, paper notebook. Next slide, but but here 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 it gets really different what you can do and and the possibilities are are just um, really cool that that are there. So um, here we have a page where um, I'm showing tags. So um, if if you and a group works with, uh, you usually you don't change your your subject every day, and um, you you might have certain. 
tags that you would like to attach to um, entries. Um, and the list of tags over time will grow. You just either you type them in or you pick them from a list. So this is a pull down that shows tags that have been uh, created in our system. Um, the use of tags is, of course, I mean, on the one hand, you can um, search like in any in any document for words, but let's say there is a, an image and it doesn't have it may have a description, but it doesn't have a, a, a certain um, uh, way of finding it. Uh, to make your life easier, you could label it with a tag, for example. So that's just one um, one example. Next slide um, uh, shows you use of templates, which, uh, and I will come back to what people like most about it, um, is, is a very potent feature, is the use of templates. What you can see here is a pull down of templates that have been accumulated in our system. Any entry can be made into a template. This is extremely um, popular and useful because uh, in a normal uh, paper notebook, obviously you have to rewrite stuff over and over and then Maybe you have already written it and it's say like on page so and so, but then it's an older lab book and so so here you just pull it down. You can even use um, templates from others in your group. You can you can import them um, and so forth. So this is very convenient. The next slide shows you such a template. Um, there's also nothing, nothing really special about this. It's an immunohistochemistry template, and um, it was pulled down. Into the into the laboratory notebook can be then obviously modified um, and so forth. Very convenient. Next slide, and I think this is extremely important and uh, is something that actually precludes the use of Evernote, Word, and so forth. Is the history of entries um, because in a Word file, obviously you can add a line, but you can also delete it and no one will ever find out that you deleted it. In an electronic laboratory notebook, at least in professional ones, um, every entry has a history. Um, you can delete entries, no no doubt about that, but um, the entry will stay there. It, it's no longer visible. You can make it visible again. There's no problem in doing this, um, but it will be documented that you have deleted it. Um, you could, even if you modify an entry, you add something, all those things are traceable. Um, and I guess I don't need to go into uh, the details why this is important. And this obviously then also brings this uh, code of federal regulation, Title 21, conformity and so forth. Um, this makes your data completely uh, trackable, traceable, and um, uh, it is transparent what has happened. With it. And this is just an example where I played with an image that I put in, and, and as you can see, it shows that the element was created, it was something was added, the text was changed, uh, I, I deleted it, and, and all kinds of things. And all those things are not only recorded that this was done. If you click on um, on a uh, text that was added, and you go in be in in, uh, in into this list. Um, in an earlier stage, you can retrieve what the entry was before you have changed it. So all this is locked, and and um, but it doesn't confuse you because it's it, it's not seen in in your uh, normal. Um, the next slide, please. Uh, that's uh, just um, uh, to show you the, what what's interesting here is a temp is is a pull down that is shown on the right. It says save as template, copy to end history. On the right, it says save as template, copy to end history, end previews, and so forth. It has uh, two things that I just want to mention. One is it says sign. So you can sign uh, and also countersign um, entries, which uh, in some uh, laboratories and under some circumstances is actually totally is required. You, you have to do it. Um, I that actually then become a part of an intellectual property uh, claim and so forth. This may be uh, necessary, um, but it's 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 a click away. You just may be uh, necessary, um, but it's 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 a click away. You just pull down sign and then you sign it and you can have someone witness it. Um, and um, 
I'll show you how this works. It's all done uh, in a very convenient uh, digital way. Next slide. That's another super feature and of, of, of an electronic laboratory notebook, and that's something that if, if um, you ask people what, what they like about it and what's special about it and, and what are the features that they would never want to miss, this is one. Um, it's the working together in teams. So um, obviously, if you work alone, that's not not a big thing. But if you work in a group or in in, in several larger groups, uh, what you can do is you can invite each other into certain projects, and you can uh, work together on um, on certain entries, on certain projects, and you can have read. Uh, pro uh, you have you have read. Um, you can read in, in others' entries, uh, you can comment, obviously you cannot change them and so forth, um, but all this has a very strict, um, uh, you can very strictly regulate the level of, of um, sort of uh, collaboration that you want. So you, 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 you can just let your collaborators see a, a particular entry, you can have them see the, the whole project and so forth. This, this is a feature that is, is extremely useful and, and has um, made in, in, in our laboratory, I think, uh, working together much easier. Next slide shows you another feature which is very helpful. It's commenting. Obviously, you can comment your own stuff. Uh, you can see the comments on the right side. But if you work together in teams and in projects, you can um, uh, comment on entries of others. Um, and you can reply to comments, and so this uh, creates a very lively exchange of, um, uh, of people who, who work together. Next slide shows you something that is also uh, extremely important and, and absolutely impossible in, in a paper laboratory notebook or in, a, uh, in Word or, or Evernote, and that's uh, administration and, and rights and submissions. So, um, in, in larger group structures, uh, you will have an administrator and you will have groups and group members and the rights uh, to, to read, to write, to amend, to do whatever are, are strictly controlled and can be adjusted to the level um, of, of, of the need of a certain group. Uh, you can have people just be able to look at stuff um, and so forth. So this is extremely important um, and works very very well. Um, next slide, um, uh, that's what LabFolder calls a dashboard. It's, it's, this is not a project now, this is, this is what they call the dashboard, and on the dashboard you would see uh, things like there's a to-do list on, on the upper left, there is a task list on the, on the lower left, there are messages, uh, there, are, there are comments. So um, just as an example, I, I showed you a comment function, so if you would put a comment somewhere, um, uh, obviously, your, your, the person you have commented on uh, would, would see it in the project, but the person would also see it in the dashboard that someone has made a comment and that uh, it, it may be time to respond to, to the comment. Um, and you can do it from there. Um, there's a, a messaging system. In this case, as you can see, the messages come from, from our administrator. Of, of the laboratory notebook um, telling people, well, there will be a system update or whatever, uh, or it's also um, accepting questions and so forth. Um, on my to-do list, there's nothing to do, um, which is good, and there's no task, but you could you could list tasks and have workflows um, in this, um, uh, on this dashboard. Next slide. Um, this is another very important feature. Um, and I'm, I'm sure many of the laboratory notebooks have it, um, and that's sharing data beyond the electronic laboratory notebook. For example, lab folder uh, directly interacts with Dropbox and with Figshare. Um, uh, with Figshare, it, it, it is relevant in, for us at least because all our data um, of our studies that we publish, we put in the public domain. We usually do this via Figshare, and you can, so you don't have to go via, I don't know, uh, intermediates. You just, from your laboratory notebook, export data into Figshare um, uh, of, the, of, of, uh, of 
data that is part of publication. Um, another highly relevant feature, of course, is that you export the, the whole project or, or maybe even your, your whole electronic laboratory notebook. This is in the lower left. It's an XHTML uh, export. This becomes important when, for example, you lose, uh, you, you leave the, the group and if, if, if you're no longer with them and you don't have access to, to the system proper running on a server somewhere, um, you can take your whole project and everything in HTML, in an XHTML uh, version on a stick with you. Um, in German law says that we, 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 sh we, we have to give our uh, students, our, our researchers, once they leave, they have, they, they have to leave the data there, but we have to give them, um, if they wish, a digital copy or a, or a paper copy. Normally, you would have to make a copy uh, on a photocopier of your um, um, of your of a paper notebook, and you have to sort of try to find all the data that's linked to it uh, and put it on a stick. In this case, you get everything dumped onto I don't know movable hard drive or a, or a, or a stick, and then you have it um, with you. This is also obviously a relevant feature. Let's say the company that you have bought into goes under, or you can no longer afford them, or whatever. Then you revert to a stage which is still better than having a laboratory notebook in paper. You, you on, on this HTML, obviously you cannot add or change or whatever, um, but it's like taking a, a paper notebook with you. So, but but much more comfortable. Um, next slide um, shows you a feature that we are actually not using really, but but it's there, and, and then you're almost there, having something like a uh, uh, a LIMS uh, laboratory inventory management system. So in, in with this particular software, you can even manage materials. But I don't, we don't have a lot of experience with it. So um, just to to sum up, um, it's. It's a, an electronic laboratory notebook is much more than a notebook. That's probably not really well known to many people who haven't used one. Uh, it does document management. It, it, it can manage roles. It can use, be used to communicate, communicate and to teamwork. Uh, you can manage inventories. Uh, it, it takes care of your of your data um, in the sense of backup and archiving. And you can do true and structured uh, quality management with it. Next slide. Um, I guess what's important, um, and and I'm sure uh, also this is true for, for for all the companies that that sell um, ELNs. Um, you need company support. Um, at some point, you need to implement the system. Uh, you have to install it. There will be updates. Um, users. Uh, may need support which which you cannot provide in-house um, and in the near future already happening there will be integration of um, certain uh, instruments and then there will be APIs um, that link your instruments directly to the, to the lab book and so forth and so uh, somehow you need a company that supports you there that the one that has sold it to you and that's probably also a, a quality marker for a company how good the support is. Next slide. Just to remind me that um, most ELNs I guess uh, and that's true certainly for, for lab folder are compatible with uh, the um, good laboratory practice guidelines of the OECD and maybe even more importantly with the Code of uh, Federal Regulations uh, Title 21, Part 11, because it does digital signatures and so forth. And for some of you, this may be may be relevant. Next slide, slide, and I'm, I'm obviously I'm not in a position to talk about pricing. I'm not going to sell it to you, but um, just to give you an idea, there are different options in a, in in most of those systems depending on whether you're an in industry or in academia, whether it's a cloud or a server solution. How much support do um, um, you want to uh, uh, you want a company to provide, and um, obviously also how many licenses are are being bought, and uh, the more you buy, the cheaper a single license gets. Next slide, and 
So I'm returning to, to my initial slide of the horses for courses, the different types. Um, I think uh, paper and, and a generic electronic documentation system do not meet minimum requirements and, and those are time stamping, copy deletion protection, user management and, and so forth and are grayed out. I think they are not an option. Uh, the high-end ear lens, the limbs are for most of us too expensive, have actually too many features which make them too complex and and they may not be that user-friendly which I think leaves us with this segment of, of these true ELNs that I was talking about. Next slide, and, and I'm already um, almost done, uh, just to return to my initial point, and hopefully it's a little bit clearer now what I said in the beginning, that uh, an ELN is, is, a, is a hub, is a, is a pivot for, for so many things, and, and you probably now have an idea that you can collaborate with it, that you can share data, that you can store data, you have inventory management, and, and all those things. So it is much more than uh, a, a laboratory notebook in, in, in the strict sense of the term. So next slide, I think, and I'm almost done. Um, what are the challenges? It's more expensive than a paper laboratory notebook, no doubt, no doubt about that. Um, there may be challenges uh, regarding integration within institutional IT. It may be a breeze or it may be complex depending on your IT structure and support that you get. Um, you need good administration and you need some user support and, and you need some, I guess, at the end, some people locally who, who really know the system and, and can help. Those that are not that avid users of, of technology and especially with technicians, this is sometimes the case. Um, you need to decide whether you want a local group or an institutional solution, um, whether there is a cloud solution uh, or an institutional uh, one. We use an institutional server. It's, it's, legally, we would not be able to do a cloud solution. Um, we started with one, but now we have we have an internal server running the system. Um, interesting and challenging in the near future is device integration, meaning instruments that directly feed into the laboratory notebook. That will certainly be the future. Um, there may be regulatory issues. That's something we learned. Um, uh, just as an example, what I mean, uh, our rules and regulations for good scientific practice stipulated the use of a paper notebook. So, so it was written down that you need to work with a paper, and, and this was these regulations were um, we came up at a time where there were no electronic ones. So this was not written against electronic ones, but actually it said you need to use paper. So we had a transition phase where we used both, uh, phased out the paper and changed the regulation. That may be idiosyncratic, but but uh, it may be. Uh, a problem somewhere else. Um, we also had to talk to unions. Uh, that may be also a German phenomenon, but there is an issue with unions in the sense that they may be concerned or that they are concerned that this could be a system that is um, there to, I don't know, uh, have um, to peek into what people are doing and, and I don't know, tracking what they are doing in an in an overly fashion. And but we could easily convince them that this is not the case. But we had to go through through these steps. And and in some instances, some people would go for for parallel solutions, but that doesn't really make sense. And so it's a challenge that you should not accept. Next slide, um, the future. I already said that I think there will be in the near future a full integration of data collection in the ELN. Um, there will be integration with open data. We are already practicing it. I mentioned it via Figshare. Um, then there are data journals now. There may be publication directly from the ELN. Um, there may be integration into structured QM systems if you have them, and, and there will be more of them. And um, if if there are auditing systems, that's also something uh, where, where these ELNs will become uh, more and more useful and, and uh, um, people will, will be happy that they are there. And that's my last slide now, so kind of a, a summary. Um, we, we, through all those 
systems that are a bit complex, there is a training phase. Um, but lo and behold, I can say that we, we don't have anyone who wants to change back to paper who, who was who, who made this watch this swap and we are now I mean fully electronic. Um, the most popular novel features compared to the paper version is, is collaboration, is data storage, are the templates, the accessibility from any computer, even from home, if you tunnel in via uh, um, uh, a, a VPN connection, um, is for, from a from a standpoint of the of the PI is oversight. It's it's much easier to see what your people are doing um, because you can basically follow it, follow it online from your from your desk. Um, it's the record keeping that's much easier now. I mean, in in the paper notebook world, um, you need to keep them for ten years. How do you store them? A PI leaves the institution. Uh, institution doesn't have a, a good system. Uh, records get lost. Stuff like that. So this is much easier to be compliant with good scientific practice. My, um, uh, yeah, I would I would recommend actually to start anyone who who is no hasn't had any experience with it to start with a pilot. Many of the companies offer free versions for small groups to start with. Um, and uh, if you do this in a in a larger environment, uh, pick a group that is motivated. Uh, don't tell anyone use it if, if they if they don't want to. It, that'll be a disaster. Um, I think for for an institution, it, it it's mandatory or at least I highly recommend it to implement the solution from one provider because if if people in 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 one laboratory or even in one institution use different systems. Um, that's that's a hassle and a problem. Um, you have to take concerns really seriously. We had in the beginning some people, those that are now really convinced, but in in the very early phase, they 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 thought, oh, if this is in on a computer and if it's shared, can everyone see it? And how secure is all this? Um, can I share data without knowing it and so forth? But once people work with it. Um, they, they understand uh, that this is all under their control and, and that it really works nicely. You need, uh, at least if, if, if this is done on a, on, a, on a larger level, you need good support from your institutional IT. Think uh, connection to how data is stored. Uh, think uh, having a, a local server running the system and so forth. Um, and um, you need to provide good support in the initial phase, particularly for, for onboarding. Um, if you have someone in a small group who has sort of found, learned it and, and, and is able to do it, that, that's perfect. Um, if this is in, it's done in a larger environment of an institution, probably you need to go with the company that provides such trainings and onboarding and then it's part of the package. But it's, it's very important to not frustrate people who, who, who install the system and say, well, I can't find this, I can't find this, and then they give up after five minutes. And if they would have continued five more minutes, they, they would have been won over. So um, it, it's, it's, it's important to have a good start. Okay, I think this is my last slide, and I'm, I'm happy to take questions. We have one question which I want to share here. Um, so it was asked, what ELN support editing of online files, for example, Word or Excel or PowerPoints or Google Docs, instead of always uploading newer versions every time? You can do this with, with I mean, I, I cannot speak to other ELNs than lab folder, but this is what you can do with lab folder. No problem. OK, great. So it looks like we have no additional questions. I answered a couple of questions along the way. Um, otherwise, I wanted to um, also introduce the the webinar that we will have in, in, in March, or sorry, in February. And that's the webinar by, um, let me just show it to you. Uh, we have a new topic. It's called Using Alternative Scholarly Metrics to Showcase the Impact of Your Research, the Introduction for Researchers. And our speaker will be Caroline Nuglia from USC.